Welcome to Tech Photo Blog. This is episode number 20. This week I'm going to be going over a wireless flash triggering system I just ordered. And as you know, I'm oftentimes doing high speed photography and I was a little unsure if these wireless flash triggering systems out there would uh, work for high speed situations. However, a bunch of people have uh, used them to success. They haven't reported back how much lag there is or how much variance. So my plan was to actually measure that in this episode. However, when I got the one I ordered, which is from Yongnu, and it's the uh, RF603C. Uh, I, I ordered this one pretty much because it was the cheapest one I could get. And I think it was about 35 bucks on Amazon. So it's a really good deal. Uh, it seems to work uh, great. The problem is that it's not compatible with the camera axe out of the box. So what I'm gonna go over in this episode are the modifications I'm gonna need to make to this so that it's compatible with the camera axe. So here's what ships in the box. You've got two of these transceiver pairs and these can act either as the transmitter or the receiver. And if you got another set, you could have one of them being a transmitter and the other three being receivers. So I kind of like how these are identical and interchangeable. Uh, you get the instruction booklet and you get this uh, camera shutter cable trigger. So this has nothing to do with triggering a flash, but I thought it was a neat addition. So you can plug this end into the uh, transceiver this end into the camera, and then you can use this button to trigger your camera remotely. And you can get different kinds of uh, cables here to trigger different types of cameras. So I kind of like that design. Let's take a little bit more look at the uh, actual transceiver here. So it's got the on off switch. This is just used to trigger the shutter. And then you plug in you know, a flash into this hot shoe like that, so it's all pretty simple. Uh, you also have a PC uh, sync port, and this is only used as an output to a flash. You can't use this to trigger the actual device, so uh, you could plug in studio flashes or whatnot. And then the only way to actually trigger this device is right here, and herein is the reason why it's not compatible with the camera axe out of the box. The uh, problem is that this is not your super simple standard uh, hot shoe connector. This is a more advanced version and the, the, I haven't been able to actually find um, a, a simple cheap hot shoe uh, female connector that will connect to this that I could use to you know, trigger this device. So um, I can trigger it manually by shorting uh, this pin and this pin together, but it's, you know, you'd have to like maybe solder some wires onto these and that's not gonna work very well. So what I'm gonna do in this episode is I'm gonna hack the internals of this transceiver to take those two pins and connect it to this port. And then I'll have one port that I can use to plug into the camera axe and I'll leave the other one unmodified and I'll be able to use uh, the other one to trigger a camera. So this one will become an input and this one will stay an output. And you'll have all the functionality that you had before, plus being able to uh, plug it directly into the camera axe. So now we just have to take apart this transceiver and that should be pretty easy. It looks like there's just three screws. This one, this one, this one. Part. There's some wires that hold the two halves together. So after a little checking with the ohm meter, I think the best approach to hacking it so that this port can be used uh, as an input for the camera axe is to just unsolder these three wires um, and then connect the white one here and then the yellow one to this pin over here. And then the green wire doesn't need to be connected to anything. So 
So now this one's disconnected. So it ended up getting a bit more complicated than I had expected. Um, I'm still using the yellow and white wires, but the pins that were originally used by the 3.5 millimeter jack uh, were not, should not be shared with the uh, flash pins. So what I ended up doing was I ended up unsoldering this uh, 2.5 millimeter jack, flipping it over, soldering on the yellow and the white wires as I had before, and then gluing it into place as you see here with some hot glue gun uh, just to hold the jack in place. Uh, th there might be better ways of doing this and um, I, you know, I, I welcome other people suggesting other ideas that they have. Um, I might take another shot at it in the future. I'm not actually uh, completely happy with how this turned out, but it should be working and the only thing I have to do now is put it together and test it. So here it is reassembled. I put a little label on it saying camera axe so I know which one's which. And when I plug in this cable, it can go into the camera axe, but I noticed some problems. So first I want to show you how it works, how it's supposed to work. So this is just going to cause a short. And the camera axe basically does this. And you can see that when I do this, the uh, red light there comes on. So this is how it should work. Unfortunately, when I connect the camera axe to the system and I trigger it like that, that red light on the camera axe goes on. I would expect this red light on the uh, uh, remote uh, wireless flash to, to go on, but you can see it does not. So I looked into some voltages on why this might be happening, and the reason is because the trigger voltage for this flash is lower than the opto isolators for the camera axe can reliably handle, so it doesn't work. And I'm not sure <laughs> how to fix it, so right now I'm going to say that this is not a very good wireless flash system to use with the camera axe because its trigger voltage is too low. Um, I'm going to put some more thought into it, and if people out there have ideas on, on how to sort of make this work with um, the opto isolator I'm using with the, the camera axe. Let me know or maybe I can look into this circuit and see if I can boost the trigger voltage somehow. Um, that would fix the problem too. Anyways, this did not go as planned, but I hope you guys learned something anyways. I'll put up this video to show you that, you know, things don't always work as planned. Thanks for watching.